Welcome to the Digital Transformation Forum, where we discuss everything related to digital transformation. Today we will be focusing on the Team Center architecture. But before we dive into Team Center architecture, let's start by understanding what application architecture is. Application architecture refers to the structural blueprint of an organization's software applications and how they interact with each other to meet the business or user requirements. It helps to ensure that applications are scalable, reliable, and can be used to identify gaps in functionality. Before we move on to Team Center architecture, let's take a moment to understand the benefit of knowing an application architecture. Having a clear understanding of an application architecture helps IT and business planner to work together to find the right technical solution to meet the business objectives. The benefits of an application architecture can be seen in cost reduction by identifying redundancy, improved efficiency by identifying gaps, creation of an enterprise platform for application accessibility and third-party integration, and the ability to design harmonious modular systems that are easier to use and maintain. By having an application architecture, architects can see the big picture and align software strategies with the organization's overall business objectives. So with that, let's now take a closer look at the Team Center architecture. Team Center architecture is classified into two tier and four tier. Tier represents the layer. We begin with a simpler two-tier architecture. It has client tier, that is the front end of the architecture, where the user interacts with the application. The tier consists of the user interface and the client application, which are responsible for communicating with the other tiers. The rich client is a platform-independent client implementation based on Java for users who interact with Team Center frequently. It is extendable to run standard Team Center and customized applications. The rich client application is deployed on each user workstation using Team Center Environment Manager, the installation setup. The rich client is supported in both the two tier architecture and the four tier architecture. On the client tier, the Team Center server runs on the client workstation. Earlier, it was via Corba Tau implementation repository called Tau IMR service. Now, from TC10 onwards, it is TCCS, Team Center Client Communication System. It manages communication with the server and the file transfer between Team Center client and servers. TCCS contains the file management system Client Cache (FCC), which uploads files from the workstation to a Team Center volume and also downloads requested files from the volume to your workstation. Resource tier. This tier is responsible for providing the underlying resources and infrastructure required by the other tiers. It includes the database file storage system, and other resources that supports the application. We will talk in detail about the file management system in future video. For now, to summarize, file management system, FMS, downloads and uploads file data for the rich client, embedded viewer, and lifecycle visualization. The FSC, file management system server cache, process runs on the server hosting the volume, and as the name implies, it is a caching mechanism on the server. Whereas the FMS Client Cache FCC process runs on the rich client host and it is also a caching mechanism but on the client side. Both helps in reducing the time to view previously accessed data. Usually this whole setup is in a single network. Two-tier architect is well suited for organization who has a smaller number of users, mainly CAD users, and the user who work in a very closed environment. The two-tier architecture in its limited capability is not enough to serve the demand of an enterprise-level integration of PLM system. The solution is to have a four-tier architecture. So now, let us see the four-tier architecture. Four-tier service-oriented architecture encompasses the two-tier architecture, hence it has client tier and resource tiers by default, which we have already covered. Now we will focus on the other two, that is web tier and enterprise tier. Let us see them in detail. Starting with web tier. This tier acts as an intermediary between the client tier and the enterprise tier. It provides services such as security, routing, and load balancing, and it enables the integration of the application with other technologies and platform. The web tier is responsible for managing the HTTP requests and response between the client and the, the enterprise tier. In simple words, it is a Java application that runs in a Java Enterprise Edition application server, such as Oracle WebLogic or Tomcat. Additionally, 
larger organization may host team center security services which also sits on the web tier team center security services eliminates the need for multiple authentication challenges as user move from one team center application to another and it provides a common framework to integrate with the site's single sign on or sso solution sso spans one or more team center applications it is established after the user is successfully authenticated through a team center logon which occurs as a side effect of the user accessing the first team center application we will discuss about the security services in detail in our future videos moving ahead we have enterprise tier this tier is the back end of the architecture responsible for managing and processing the business logic data storage and other services the enterprise tier provides the service required by the client application such as database access content management and security we will first speak about the business logic server or commonly known as pool manager it comprises a configurable pool of team center c++ server processes and a server manager the enterprise tier retrieves data from and stores data into the database a server manager is a tool to manage system resources in a four tier team center environment the server manager enables you to maximize server availability while minimizing resource requirements the team center management console server manager administration interface enables you to manage the server pool and individual servers from within a web browser in addition to managing the server pool and individual users the team center management console includes the capability to set logging and monitoring parameters which otherwise must be set manually in individual xml files we can use third party applications to view server manager administration data in a more comprehensive manner than in available in the out of the box team center server manager administration interface some example of the third party applications are j console java visual vm and hp operations manager next is the more basic license before we install team center we must install the siemens digital industries software license server to distribute licenses to team center host every request coming to the enterprise tier after getting validated from web tier will come to the license server to fetch the license team center employs named user licensing which ties each user in the system to an available license and ensure the total number of active licenses of each type in the system is always less than or equal to the number of licenses purchased last in enterprise tier is the dispatcher component a dispatcher server function as an independent compute server that translate files from one format to other format it consists of a dispatcher scheduler dispatcher modules and dispatcher admin client for better load balancing each dispatcher module resides on a separate machine and is connected to the dispatcher scheduler the scheduler sends translation requests to the modules and they invoke one or more translators to perform the translation we will talk in detail about dispatcher in our future video for now to keep it simple understand that dispatcher is used to translate files from one format to other formats the four tier architecture is designed in such a way that the client tier is the only tier that is exposed to the outside network and other tiers are hidden behind a firewall this design helps improve the security of the system as the sensitive data is stored and processed on servers that are not directly accessible from any other network that completes our four tier architecture in conclusion the four tier soa provides a flexible and scalable architecture that can support the development and deployment of modern applications however as today most of the organization prefers to work with a web based solution for faster interaction with the application that is where awc comes into picture first let us see what is active workspace client and then we will discuss how it fits in the four tier architecture team center has come a long way since its thin client browser based interface with limited capabilities The evolution of thin client has led to the development of active workspace client commonly known as AWC which has a has a much more advanced and user friendly interface than its predecessor one of the key feature of AWC is the backing of solar search engine which enables quick and accurate searching of large amount of data in team center database AWC provides a broad set of team center functionalities including mobile device support making it accessible from computers laptop and even and even smartphones with just a network and a browser the benefits of using AWC are numerous 
including zero installation requirements, no need for plugins such as ActiveX or Java, compatible with device supporting HTML5 or CSS3, global search, a user-friendly interface, and improved performance. Now let's see how these components of AWC fits AWC architecture can be seen as an extension of Fortier architecture with microservices framework in it. So starting with client here, we have web-based Active Workspace client, which can be enabled by adding the AWC client feature in Team Center Environment Manager. Under web tier, we have AWC Gateway. It is a Node.js implementation that routes all requests for static content such as HTML, CSS, JavaScript, JSON, and other types, and dynamic content such as API routing to backend services and microservices for SOA, FMS, visualization, GraphQL, and others. Moving ahead to enterprise tier, first we got microservices. Microservices is an architectural pattern which develops a set of components having their own independent deployment service. Various team center solutions and applications include microservices as part of their deployment. For example, the Active Workspace client requires Darcy, TC, GQL, and file repository microservices. The file repository provides centralized temporary storage for Active Workspace client contained access through the Active Workspace gateway. This storage gives other microservices an alternative to the FMS. The microservices framework enables microservices to run seamlessly across diverse platform. Important thing to note here is that all microservices nodes in a team center environment must be hosted on a server of a single operating system type. To manage the microservices, we must make use of Docker Swarm cluster on Linux deployment, whereas for Windows, it is automatically managed via service team center process manager. The visualization server performs the heavy lifting of 3D visualization and rendering, allowing the client to display the visualization more smoothly and efficiently. In summary, the visualization server provides an enhanced 3D visualization experience for users as well as simplifies the management and maintenance of the visualization environment, which can lead to cost saving and improved productivity. Next up is the indexing process. Indexing process makes it possible for users to quickly search for information contained within the index files. TCFTS indexer is responsible for processing and importing team center data into Solar and it can be configured to use either a synchronous or asynchronous flow, depending on the system requirement. This allows users to access and retrieve relevant information quickly and efficiently, improving their overall experience with Active Workspace. Lastly, we have the Solar Search Engine database, which by the way sits in the resource tier. It used to store the index data for quick and easy search in Active Workspace. Only relevant product data is stored in Solar, while the original data is stored in Team Center and retrieved as needed. Solar is a highly scalable, open source search platform for Apache, which makes it a reliable choice for large data indexing and search requirement. The four-tier architecture does not represent physical location of software components. It is a logical organization for grouping components and functionality. Team center components can be deployed on a single machine or multiple machines, which we will see in our future videos. That concludes our overview of the Team Center architecture. In future videos, we will dive deeper into how these components interact with each other. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give us a thumbs up and let us know in the comments what topics you would like us to cover. Thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next one.